So after the great success of our multi-purpose GPS tracker project, now we came up with the new and advanced 4G GPS tracker which got a lot of new features in it. So now let me show you its quick demo. So with this, we can do the real-time location tracking with our own made Android application along with the real-time speed and battery level monitoring. Secondly, we have an SOS feature in which we can press and hold this button on it and it will send the location data to our loud ones which they can visualize in the Google Maps and they will also get a call on the same number through which they can listen to all the conversations happening around the device. Then this device also got a feature to run on vehicle's battery so that you can track the vehicle in real time. And lastly, it got an auto call receive feature in which we can call to this device and it will automatically receive the call on it and we can spy someone's conversation secretly if we want. Isn't that a truly multi-purpose location tracker device? Those were some amazing features of the project and this video gonna cover everything about it starting from the hardware to the coding part. And in the end, I'll also let you know how you can get this project for yourself. So now without wasting any time, let us move on to the hardware part of the project. So for making this project, we'll need these all components and here the major component is the SIM A7672S which is a 4G module with built-in GNSS and to give command to this module, here we are using the ESP8266 dwelling module which comes cheaper in price and also it requires very less external components for its working. And later, after gathering all the components, we connected them all according to the schematic diagram. Now here we have mentioned the functionalities of each and every part specifically so that you can easily understand the use case of every component and can learn from it. So here I'll be providing this schematic in my GitHub repository so that you can use it for your reference. And later after finalizing the schematic, we designed a custom PCB for this project and later we gave its order to PCB Go Go. Now PCB Go Go is one of the largest PCB manufacturer in China and luckily I got a chance to visit their factory last year. It is really huge and they are processing around 3000 orders per day. And ordering PCBs online through PCB Go Go is really very simple. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, select the number of PCBs and color masking and later select the shipping option as per your location. Now here PCB Go, Go offers 24 hours PCB manufacturing time without any extra cost if you allow to add the PCB Go, Go logo on it which is really convenient for makers like us. And after that your design will be reviewed for any error and later after reviewing you can pay for your order and get it delivered at your doorsteps. Now the PCB comes safely in a vacuum packaging and the PCB quality feels really premium. Now currently they are having an amazing offer where you can get $25 worth PCB at just a dollar for all the new users and also they are providing free shipping in North America and Europe. So just click the link mentioned in the description and get your PCBs from PCB Go Go. And now talking about my Indian audience then if you feel the shipping price and the import duty collectively makes a very big amount well then you can connect with us and we can help you to directly import the custom PCB for you. So in the description of this video I have attached a PCB inquiry form so do fill it up and we'll help you to get the PCBs manufactured from PCB Go Go without any hassle of shipping and import duty taxes. So here after receiving the PCBs we started shouldering all the components on it one by one and later after shouldering them all the final PCB project looks like this neat and very compact so that was all about the hardware part of the project and now let's move on to the computer and have a look over the coding part Okay, so this is a complete code for 4G based multipurpose GPS tracker project and it may seem confusing at first but trust me it's really very simple as I have put comments to every important function, every important line of the code to make you understand better. Still I'll explain the important lines of the code in the video itself starting from the uh, version that you need to use. So here I mentioned that this code is tested with the Arduino ID version 2.3.2 and ESP8266 board package version 3.1.2. In case if you're trying to upload the code and it's not working cross check the version is exactly the same which I'm using here. Later here I have declared all the important libraries and this time as well I have declared the link of the library from which you can download and install it and I also mentioned the version on which we have tested this code. So make sure you have the same version. Later comes the pinout section where we are using the SOS button at the GPIO0 now SOS button and the boot button R1 and the same in our project. Later the RX and TX pin are 14 and 12. This is for the SIM model communication. Let us move on to the GPRS credentials and here we need to provide the APN name and to find the APN name of your network provider, you can use Google for that. In my case, I'm using the VI SIM card. So I just search for APN name for VI SIM card and I got it as WWW. In case if you're using any other SIM card, make sure you search it on Google. 
after that we need to provide the mqtt details now for this project we are sending the data in real time to a cloud mqt broker now in this case i'm using the adafruit mqt broker which comes in a free version as well of course with some limitation but yes if you want to use any other mqt broker or your own mqt broker well you can change all the credential here and this code will work for your uh, broker as well so for adafruit io let me tell you what are the important things that to be mentioned so the broker name will remain the same io.adafruit.com letter the client name can be any random name or number later the MQT username and MQT password you can find by going into the Adafruit IO account and just click on this yellow key and here's the username and here is the AIO key or we can say the MQT password that you need to provide here after that these are the topics on which we'll be publishing the data so i have declared five topics one is the voltage topic for the raw battery voltage data the second is the battery uh, topic on which I'll be signing the battery percentage value. Then lat is for the latitude data, long is for the longitude data, and speed is for uh, you know displaying the speed at which the GPS tracker is moving. So again, if you are using any other broker, make sure you change the topic name as well. Later, we need to provide the SOS number on which we'll be making the emergency call and we'll be sending the location data in SMS. So make sure you provide the number with the country code as well. So India the country code is plus nine one and followed by the mobile number after that comes the set timer interval section where we have declared three different kind of timer intervals let me explain all of them first is the location data interval which is a time interval for sending the location data which is set to eight seconds by default Second is the battery status, which is a time interval for sending the battery percentage data, which is set to the 60 seconds. Third is the SOS time, which is the time interval for how long the button need to be pressed to trigger the SOS functionalities, which is set to five seconds. Now here, of course, you can change it as per your application, as per your need. But as I'm using the free version of Adafruit MQT broker, which has a limitation of sending limited number of packets in 60 seconds so that's why i have chosen a particular time interval so that it doesn't exceed the free version so these were some of the data that you need to change if you want to make it work on your end the rest of the code will more or less remain the same but still let me go through it so here are the serial model declaration the timer declaration the uh, necessary variables after that we are coming to the setup part where we are beginning the serial communication then resetting the modem making it connect to the network connect to the gprs and later we are configuring the security broker and the timers as well so now after initializing and establishing all the communication now we are good to go to provide commands to our same model so first we are sending the at command just to check all the connectivity later we are using the cgnss power to turn on the gnss inside the same module then we are switching the port with the help of cgnss port switch and now comes the loop part where all the data is sent in real time after every particular interval so in the loop we are making sure that the network is always connected we are making sure that it is always connected via gprs or internet we can say and we are also making sure it is always connected with an mqt broker in case everything is connected we are just calling this mqt.loop function which will handle all the mqt related tasks in the back end later we are also checking if the timer is ready to send the data timer for battery timer for location both are uh, checked here and last but not the least when sos button is pressed so when the sos button is pressed for more than five seconds these function will be called where it will be sending the gps data along with the voice call automatically that's the sos feature and we have one more function which is waiting for incoming call to automatically receive it so here on the 4g gps module you can call through any mobile number and this module will automatically pick up the call and you can talk to the person who has a gps tracker or can listen what's happening around that person so that was the complete code and how all things are working. Uh, you can also go through the rest of the functions and I have provided uh, the comments in that so you can understand what each function is meant for. And yeah, that's the complete code. And now let me show you how to upload it. So first we'll select the right board, uh, which is node MCU 1.0 and the right COM port is already selected. And now we just need to hit the upload button in case if you have provided all the details properly if you have uh, used the same library and boards package version which i'm using well the code will get compiled and uploaded without any error okay so the code is successfully uploaded and now let me show you it's working so later to make this project looks more neat we designed a 3d printed case for this project and now let's assemble it quickly after assembling it more or less it looks like a feature phone isn't it now let's insert the sim card and power up the project. 
Now this time we got our own Android application developed for this project in which you can enter all your MQTT credentials and topics name according to the cloud that you are using and it will work for any MQTT cloud platform. Later, after providing all the credentials, just click on the connect button and it will establish the connection with the MQT Cloud Broker. And now, as it's successfully connected, let us take this module on a long ride. So as you can see, every 8 seconds, we are getting the new data about the location and also about the speed at which our vehicle is moving. Awesome! Later, we stopped our vehicle on road to test the SOS feature. So here, we'll press and hold the button for more than 5 seconds and it will trigger the SOS function. And here, on the smartphone, we received the SMS that contains the Google Maps link of our location and also we got a call on it through which we can listen to what's happening around the tracker. So now for the next feature, we shouldered the wires at the pinouts and later connected it with our bike's battery and this will not only make our tracker work but it will also charge the built-in battery. And after fitting it, now I can track the vehicle 24 by 7 and can know where it is right now and at what speed it is moving. Not only that, but this app is made in such a way that we can also see the logs at the bottom like what data we are receiving kind of a mini serial monitor as we have in an Arduino IDE. And finally, now let me show you the audio quality of the built-in mic and speaker of our tracker. So now I'll be testing the auto call receive feature of our 4G multipurpose GPS tracker. So I'll call <coughs> on that tracker with my phone and let us see. And with this we'll also be testing the mic and the speaker quality. Hello? 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 <laughs> so that was the mic and speaker test of our 4G GPS tracker and also we tested the auto call receive feature. So that was our truly multi-purpose 4G GPS tracker and we tried to add as many features as we can. So do hit the like button right now if you really like this project, really like all the feature of this and also let me know in the comments like which is your favorite feature of this tracker. And now talking about uh, this project then we will be selling it on our website so that you can buy it you can try this on your end as well and we'll be start shipping this project after 10 days of publishing this video so you can place the order right now but it will start shipping after 10 days so it's kind of a pre-order or pre-booking you can say the purchase link of the project is down in the description so do check that out so yeah that was all about our project that we were working for such a long time and i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed this video and yeah that being said, and I am just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video. Until then, explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.